Hello friends, uh, welcome to my channel. Let's have a look at problem 2345, finding the number of visible mountains. So in this video, we're going to share a solution by transforming the current problem into the counting of non-overlapping intervals. So this problem here asks us to return the number of visible mountains. And here are two examples. In example three, we are given three mountains and two of them can be seen. And in example two, we are given two mountains, and the two mountains coincide, so none of them can be seen. So the return is zero. And the main constraint in this problem is that the number of mountains is bounded above by 10 to the power 5. Notice that uh, 10 to the power 5 is a decent large number. So let's look at the method and the solution here. So as we mentioned, we're going to transform the current problem into the counting of non-overlapping -over in intervals. So uh, let's consider two intervals to uh, fix the idea. So let's come to the picture illustration. So uh, let's uh, divide into three cases. Uh, in the first case, the corresponding intervals for the mountains uh, form no inclusion relationship. Therefore, we can see both the two mountains. And in the second case, uh, the corresponding intervals form an inclusion relation, but the two intervals are not the same. So we can only see one mountain. So we see the largest mountain, actually. So in the third case, the two intervals or the two mountains coincide. So we can see none of them. So as a side remark, so given the peak of x0 and y0 for the mountain, so it's very simple to compute the corresponding intervals. So we just need to write down the equations for the two sides with slope positive 1 and negative 1. And then we set y equals 0, so we get the two ends of the corresponding interval. One is x0 minus y0, and the other is x0 plus y0. So with that said, let's come back to the problem. So the procedure will be the following. We're going to map the peaks to the corresponding intervals, and then we count non-overlapping intervals. So item two actually is very routine. So we just need to sort according to the interval start, and then do a linear traversal. But here, we need to do counting according to the problem requirement. So our plan here is the following. So as this is a new appearing problem, uh, we first solve it here. And later, we shall, solve, we shall do a playlist for similar problems. In other words, the interval merge type. So actually, there are a number of lead code problems that can be transformed to interval merge type, such as lead code problems 56, 57, 495, 763, and so on. So before we write the code, actually it's good to have some examples like these three uh, in mind. So with that said, let's look at the code. So we're going to split the code into two parts. So first part is a preparation. So we are going to get the intervals and uh, do the thought. So this is actually very routine. So let's call intervals equals uh, x minus y, x plus y for x, y in peaks. And then we do a thought according to the start of the intervals. So we need to just uh, do this uh, original thought. That's OK. And then we're going to do the counting. So count and uh, linear traversal. So for this purpose, let's first introduce a variable called count. So we are going to return its final state. And then we are going to introduce a reference interval. Let's call it S and E, representing start and end. So let's call it float infinity and float infinity. So this setting will make sure that the SE interval will the reference interval will not uh, not overlap with the intervals given in the problem. 
and then we are ready to do the linear traversal for a b in uh, intervals. Uh, notice that the current intervals are already sorted. So I'm going to uh, split into two cases covering the three cases we are uh, demonstrating in the picture. So first is the left end of the interval coincide case. So in other words, if A equals S. So in this case, uh, we'll consider this one. B, if B is greater than E, then we are, look, we are seeing a new uh, high mountain. So, right? so in this case, um, if it's the first time we see a new high, so we are going to uh, reset SE by AB and make the count uh, plus one. Right? So this is the one situation we treated. And another case, another situation we want to point out is that here we are going to write another if clause so to deal with the situation. For example, we have two mountains, one three and one three. So the corresponding interval actually is negative two and four. Um, negative two and four. So in this case, so if we have two intervals, so none of them can be seen. So we are going to treat this as if b equals e. And then we are going to uh, decrement the count by one. And notice that count is non-negative. We want to make sure this is maximum of count and zero. So actually here we are writing as if and another if rather than if and else if. The reason is that the second if statement automatically treats this case. So for intervals, if we have something like this, uh, negative 2, 6, and negative 2, 8. And in this case, so we actually see only one mountain. Right? For example, you have another one that's negative 2, uh, 10. So, but this if clause automatically treat this situation. The reason is, if we reset this 6, and we uh, then we look at this one, if we reset the b uh, equals e, then actually in this if we have b equals e, then we automatically decrement by 1. So that's why actually this structure, if and if, is crucial for this problem. So now after we seeing this situation, so we're going to uh, do another case, that is the left end does not coincide. So this corresponding to left ends do not coincide. So in other words, uh, we have A is greater than S. So in this case, actually we just need to pay, uh, pick this case. If B is greater than E, uh, then we actually see a new mountain. So we just make count increment by one and reset S and E to be A and B respectively. And finally, we are going to return the uh, count. So that's the full solution for this problem. Uh, let me make an uh, emphasis one point. So here, uh, here we are writing two if clause, uh, not if and else if. The reason is that in the, se the second if is important. It treats two cases. First case is that if the mountains are identical, then we are going to use this count decrement to treat that situation. And another situation is that if we have a cascading uh, mountains, then this decrement and this with the previous reset of S E equals A B automatically decrement by one. So overall is that for such case we see one mountain. For such case we see zero mountain. So with that explained, I guess we are ready to do a special case check. Yeah, it passes a special case. Now let's look at the generic case check. Uh, yeah, it passes uh, the generic case. Um, I guess uh, for this solution, that's about it. So um, as we mentioned, so there are quite a number of problems can be transformed that can be transformed to interval merge type. So it's good to have a try or follow up in this uh, channel. Uh, thank you very much.